10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Paul's off the internet, dude. Paul is leaving the internet for a year. You've been on the internet for a super long time, you're, most of your adult life. Right. And you want to write, he wants to write about like what his life is like without the internet. It's something that I want to do for the personal exploration of how it would help me deal with my productivity, my creativity, and figuring out how the internet's impacting me. And just stop and smell the flowers. I mean, really just use the opportunity of this year to take hold of the basic human joys of life. I just feel overwhelmed because I, you know, I don't seem to be in sync with the human race. You know, like, I, it's, it's, a, it's, there's deeper, deeper reasons for most of my problems that really didn't have a lot to do with the internet. They just manifest differently on and offline. When I was a freshman in high school, he was a senior in high school. We both did football, so we didn't really see each other much, but then he would, he and his buddy would drive me home after practice. So I got to ride in the back of his buddy's truck. So I felt, felt so cool knowing two seniors. Zach was just like the perfect person at all times. And he got in the Air Force Academy, and then he flew B-52s, and he has been at the Academy running the jump team. And now he's going to Qatar. Now my brother and I don't talk on the phone very well. It was always nice to be able to Skype with his kids and I couldn't do that this year. So being with them in person, I got to connect with them in a way that was just impossible this year without the internet. When I got to Colorado Springs and my flight was delayed and it, was, it seemed like a big hassle and he's got one day left with his family and I felt like I was crashing the party. You know, this is like a really, emotional, difficult goodbye for all of them. And like, what was I doing there? But, but once I was there, I felt like I really belonged there. So you've got a computer, right? Okay. So this is your iMac. The internet connects your computer to other computers. I disconnected, so I don't have the internet. It's for a whole year I've spent without the internet, so I can't Skype with you because I can't connect. Because you didn't want to do it? Yeah, I wanted to take a break. Not that. Because you didn't like it? I didn't like it sometimes. I think the internet's really good, but sometimes I get a little tired of it. I used too much internet. And see, I didn't spend time with real people. But now, at the end of this month, I'm going to be back on the internet, and then I can Skype with you. Uh, the true nuclear family. I felt this year I kind of missed a lot of opportunities to leave the house and leave New York. I wanted to do something really tangible before I came back to the internet. And you write novels about road trips. You make road trip movies, but sitting in your apartment all day is not really that exciting. Let's see, yeah, so the general plan is not to have too much of a plan. Like, I don't want to be swept along by the interstate and told what to do by Google Maps and stuff. I want to see if I can see the beautiful midsection of America. So I left the internet this year, and I do think it was an indictment, or, or at least a, a chance to judge how valuable the internet is to me. I was pretty surprised to see that in a lot of ways it, it, it's non-vital, at least the way I was using it. I thought when I first left the internet that it'd be a lot of like getting used to using the library and the post office and like really practical stuff, but I just didn't really do much of that. I'm pretty good at getting around New York. If I need to get around somewhere else, I, you know, I could buy a paper map. I just did less, you know, I didn't stress about the things I couldn't, couldn't do. I don't miss the internet. I don't dream about it, I don't yearn for it. You know, every once in a while somebody's like, oh, there's this really funny thing uh, happening on Twitter, but I can't tell you, uh, you know, but I don't, I don't care. You know, my biggest fear though is that at the end of the year, I don't want to really go back to the internet full bore. Even though it's so awesome, it's such a cool thing, I just, I like myself a lot better not on the internet, so. 
I feel like doing a year of this is gonna be like a piece of cake. This is just, this is basically really easy right now. Uh, they're like there's tiny minor inconveniences in exchange for having a blast. A total, complete blast. From beautiful Holly, Colorado. It's like 9.45, so we're, we're a little slow on the start, but it's all right, and um, we're really close to Kansas. We're gonna try to get all the way through Kansas today. We're kind of along the Santa Fe Trail. Which you, it's kind of like the, the Oregon Trail of the Santa Fe. I feel like we haven't really scratched the surface with who is Paul Miller, but that's what Kansas is for, because Kansas is gonna be really boring. Springfield, Missouri at Grace Chapel. Uh, this is where my parents went when I was born. I never planned to reconnect with my childhood or anything, but I did want to know what, what I would look like without the internet, because the last time I knew myself without the internet was when I was about 12. I, I hope I can capture a little bit of that stupid imagination that kid had. You know, before I had the internet, I used my computer to write a allegorical fiction where me and my siblings' rooms were different kingdoms, and then I was also making stop-motion animation short films. After I got the internet, I used AIM and did message boards, and then eventually built a Lindsay Lohan fan site. There are two eras, you know, and so I'm kind of getting a look at the old era before I go back to, you know, the new era again. The idea really sprung up just from the concept I wanted to, I never went to school, and so I wanted to like study like, you know, great books so I could be more educated and be a better writer. And I was like, where, well, I spend all my time using the internet, so if I didn't use the internet, I would have unlimited free time. I told Josh, I told Josh I was gonna quit. That was, that's how I phrased it. I didn't say like, hey, I'm gonna do this crazy experiment. Like, I was quitting The Verge. I think I was really burned out. I, I'd been doing tech writing for seven years at that point, about seven years. I felt like a, a big treadmill effect because, you know, my email just never ends. The work chat room is always busy. There's always something to do. There's always no, more and more and more news to cover. You know, I was trying to like transition over to feature writing and like you know bigger features, but I was kind of bad at it. I think a lot of that exhaustion made it feel like it was imperative instead of it just being a cool, fun idea. It felt like my only hope at sanity and kind of get off the treadmill. Can I get four of those um, the light green enjoys? Uh huh. Do you like them? I really do. And I'm addicted. You're addicting? I'm addicted. Oh. I left the internet because it seemed like the only choice at the time. Did it work? It, it didn't really, no, it didn't really work. There's been some awesome things from this year. Um, there's been some negative things from this year, but as far as like, my thesis is setting out, it's like, you know, well, I've got a year to do all this awesome stuff. I didn't do, you know, half of it. I ended up playing a lot of video games and just I kind of, I didn't quite chug through books like I expected myself to. And I, and I still feel overwhelmed and it's, and it's a different kind of overwhelmed. It's just more existential and it has less concrete factors. This is where I spent most of the last year of my life. I typically have my feet up right here, 
Um, I typically have an Xbox controller on my lap. And, uh, and then there's like an e-cigarette, like somewhere in the fold of clothing. I, I still haven't finished the first draft of my novel that I've been working on for five years. And I, you know, I don't, I haven't written this book about leaving the internet yet. And I, I don't know if, I don't know how, I don't know if I can. I, I think, I hope I can, but I just, you know, I've got no evidence yet that I, I will be able to write a whole book. This might sound like a downer, but I'm kind of a depressive. And for me, that means that just sometimes it kind of hurts to be alive. It's just like, it's just, it's just uh, you know, it sucks to, that you gotta kind of do each day and keep doing the next day. And it just, moments hurt sequentially. And when I'm bombarded with, you know, information and stimulation, and I can always, you know, feel, feel that need every time, you know, I feel like I feel like I'm getting bored and I'm not happy, and so I can go and do something really quickly to kind of fill that need. I I think I can confuse the the issue and, and confuse the subject and kind of not quite understand the way I was feeling was 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 deeper than just I'm bored right now. It, it had something to do with I like I'm deeply distressed that. Uh, uh, life goes on. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to say it. And and so some of the sort of the loneliness and boredom that came from leaving the internet was really instructional because it just it, it let me know that you know my problems were much more e internal than external. Justin McElroy is a writer at Polygon, which is the video game sister site of The Verge. I'm just kind of a total fanboy of, of Justin McElroy. I find him incredibly, incredibly hilarious. And he also just seems to have a life kind of figured out. I want to know his secret. Are you worried that when you get back on the internet that you, like, do you think you made like a lasting change in your consumption? Like, have you changed your relationship with it? or? Is it, are you worried that it'll be like, <laughs> I missed all of it. Right now I'm like, I, I might just have zero defenses. If like an alien invades planet Earth and they're destroying everything, but they don't have any immune right, system right. So, to respond to our diseases. So you're saying so I can get a call from you up. telling me that like, I don't know, this Nigerian prince seems super legit. <laughs> yeah. He said if I send him $7,000, so I could be really super rich. So I don't know, I'm gonna give it a shot. See now, I wanted to ask. I just feel like you've kind of you've got it. You've got it together. Oh God! You've got it going on. I want some like, life advice. You're married. Mm -hmm. I would love to be married. You know, there I cannot help you. You live in a beautiful neighborhood, and I can't really expect to ever do this well. Um, as far as your your wife giving you advice, I think I started having more success when I stopped feeling like there was a narrative to my life. I think once you let go of that idea, then first off, you stop seeing yourself as like the most important thing in your narrative. You know, you see yourself as more of a component. I don't have, there's no arc to my story. There's no like climax or anticlimax or, or denouement. So trying to find where things connected or like what made sense in my arc mm. didn't really make a lot of sense. And once I let go of that, mm -hmm. like, because that was a big thing for me in high school and college. I, and like, once I let go of that, I think I, I started having more success or became happier. I've, I've always felt a lot of pressure to have done something by 27. But like, once I'm, all, I'm through 27, like, I'm almost 30. And then like, I'm totally single and still can't write longer than a thousand words. At this point, the only thing that's left for me is being a novelist, because you can, you can start relatively late. 
It's terrible, but I think of Dylan and the Beatles like when I'm thinking about music, and that it's too late to really do something great and special in music because I couldn't be Dylan and the Beatles. But I've, I've tried to deprogram myself from thinking about the art and made more decisions, not like in the moment, just but, just, but what I really want to be doing right now, what, 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 what should I really be doing right now? and do that thing instead of thinking about the art. I want this next year to be about other people than, than just Paul Miller. <laughs> there's only so much navel gazing that one guy can do, and, and you know, there's people in the world with real problems other than that they use Reddit too much. So I'm gonna go back to real life and stop, you know, fooling around so much. I have no regrets. What a good year. This is a really cool thing that I got to do. I'm really lucky to work for a site like this that, that wanted to find out what would happen if I left the internet. I think now I know about as much as I'll ever know about Offline Paul. What, what, what about me is because I use the internet, or what about me is because I'm Paul Miller and I was born in Springfield, Missouri to Dennis and Christine Miller and then I grew up being a cowboy and playing roller hockey and, and now I'm a tech writer. I'm Paul Miller and I, I just spent the year without the internet. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs>